You alright there ladies and gents, how's it going? I'm down at Brighton Moto. This is the dealership I got my Moto Guzzi V85 from. They very kindly lent me this. The brand new Aprilia 660 Torino. And I'm very much looking forward to having a little go on it. Now this isn't a review, it's just a first look. Just a first impressions type thing. Um, but I'm very much excited about having a go on this. I really want to have a go on the RS660. Fortunately, this is the one they've got a demo for because I put me back out the other day, so I'm a bit stiff and I can't move about too much. So I'm quite glad this one's a little bit more upright. But anyway, let's get into it. Keep that bike. Us down. All right then, I'm on the bike. So first impressions. It's very comfortable for my size, as in the bars are pretty much where I'd want these bars to be on a bike like this. The seat is quite compact. I think a few people have said that on their reviews. Um, and my bum is pushing up against the bum stop um, and I am quite close to the front of the or, or the rear of the tank as well so uh, yeah it's quite a compact little motorcycle talking of little though it's not that little on seat height um, yeah it's I'd say it's close to the same feeling as my Moto Guzzi V85 is and that's an adventure bike so um, that was a bit surprising but I knew it was going to be a little bit tall um, just because I've tried sitting on a proper Torino <laughs> and the Prettys are always a little bit tall there is no mistaking that it's a twin though no mistaking at all but it feels like a V-twin and its sound is amazing now I'm only going town speeds at the moment and uh, yeah, compared to my V85, this thing sounds divine. I love it. Do you really even need an aftermarket exhaust pipe for it? We'll find out when we open it up in a bit. <laughs> there is a little weight on your wrists on this because it, although it looks like it's a very upright motorcycle, it isn't hugely upright. It's not like adventure bike upright or dirt bike upright. It's road bike upright. It's very similar to, I'd say the Speed Triple. Not the street triple, the street triple leans you a bit further forward I found, but the speed triple feels a bit more compact on the bar to body relationship ratio thing. Um, so this kind of feels a little bit like that. Different angle on the bars though, these definitely feel far more straight uh, and I quite like that, it's kind of almost aggressive, thug-like. Um, yeah, it feels very sharp actually and I've only gone around one corner and that was at a set of traffic lights which were red from the stop. So I mean like, <laughs> I'm not exactly experiencing any of its handling ability just yet. I don't know what mode we're in, I think we're in dynamic, which is like sport mode, yes, dynamic mode. Um, and around town, it's, it's very responsive is um, how I would say. Now, this is my first ever sit on this bike and I'm not used to it, so it's not me complaining about stuff, but compared to my V85, for example, um, this is very sharp, very sharp indeed. And I don't know um, how that would transition to regular town riding, but I'd have thought this would be an awesome little blast through the city type thing if you were um, having to commute on a bike. I think we've got more speed here. Yep, 40. <laughs> I'll tell you what, all the reviews I've watched of this bike and the RS660 say this engine is an absolute peach and i just getting a right stiffy <laughs> for the way this engine feels already and uh, I don't think many bikes have done that to me. Um, I've always been a fan of twins but mainly V-twins, never really looked at parallel twins and uh, Oh boy, this thing sounds like it's going to be fun, certainly playful. Alright, let's open it up a little. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my word. Um, I'm not caning it here, so I'm not like sitting there going, oh, I'm being a naughty boy or anything. But this is really, really something. <laughs> I've just got off my V85, which I am running in. This is its uh, service has gone in there for. So, uh, riding that slug compared to this, don't get me wrong, I love my V85, it's a fantastic motorcycle. But this thing is special, this thing is really, really quite special. It's a razor blade, I mean, this is far sharper than my uh, 765 was. I know I had the low version of that bike, so um, it, it's not going to handle as, as sharply as... 
as a full height bike just because um, they've got a different geometry um, but yes this is this is nimble and it feels so light oh god the ground's a mile away <laughs> so they've given me this bike for a few hours which will hopefully give me a chance to just get used to it get my head around how it feels and stuff um, and uh, find out if I think it's something that I want in my garage now I was really wanting to have a go on the RS660 but my back is in a tender way at the moment so I'm quite glad that this was what was available for me um, but I'm very surprised at how fun this feels <laughs> I thought the RS was the way forward well I don't know, I'm definitely going to have to have a demo on it it comes with Rosso 2's fitted which are very very sticky I didn't like them on my street triple uh, not because the tyres were bad to start with it's just that they got bad and I think that's one of the things that happens with bikes with their original equipment tyres is that they wear out too quickly um, whereas if you went and bought a set off the shelf they'd last a bit longer and uh, yeah these feel very sporty the profile on them definitely complements the motorcycle oh that low down grunt is lovely <laughs> You know when a bike makes you laugh from the off. It's it's good, it's good. <laughs> oh, the noise is amazing as well. Right then, let's see what this is like on dual carriageway at speed and wind buffeting and all that sort of stuff. This bike has got cruise control and I'm not gonna faff around while I'm riding it trying to find it, uh, but it has got cruise control, which I think is an awesome thing to have on a motorcycle. I've got it on my V85 and I use it quite a lot certainly on uh, motorways which tend to have a lot of police presence and also on uh, those average um, speed camera areas and things like that so I think they're a really awesome thing to have on a motorbike in modern times others disagree I know that it kind of like takes that little bit of control away from you but it doesn't it's so easy to uh, turn them off just by dipping the accelerator or uh, foot brake or uh, the front brake and uh, yeah you will be back in the safe zone of being in full control of the throttle um, on longer journeys it can give you a little right wrist a little bit of a brake which is a really nice thing to have so um, yeah I, I'm, I'm fully with having a little bit of um, cruise control on a motorcycle but yeah at 70 mile an hour the air on this bike is really clean my head is in the wind um, but it's not uncomfortable I don't really know what this thing here is doing not a lot to be honest but it's clean air behind me I've got a car up my chuff I'm just going to uh, move out of their way they obviously want to go faster than me so yeah you're in nice clean air it's a nice place to be the riding position is, uh, is is lovely actually I could probably sit like this all day long especially knowing that I've got that cruise control that I can rely on as well because uh, yeah yeah this would be absolutely fine for doing a bit of miles on it would be a little bit small over time I think just because your knees are actually in quite a tuck um, but if you're short like me that's not really a problem the only problem with being short like me on a bike like this is its height because it is very tall or it feels very tall it is something you get used to and the bike is so light uh, yeah I mean I don't think it would ever be intimidating I've got a fuel light on so I've got to go and find some petrol but yeah, motorways, dual carriageways, no problem whatsoever. Oh, look at that. I'm glad I was doing 68. <laughs> Always police along here. Always police along here. <laughs> right now, that I'd really like that cruise control on. But anyway, I shall catch you in a sec. Right then, let's see what this thing's like in the twisties, shall we? Oh, this is a B-Road brilliant bike. <laughs> oh, so flickable. Oh my word, this thing is just divine. <laughs> this is better than the street triple. 
this is better than the street okay it's better than the street triple seven six five r low ride height just to clarify that um yeah i can't tell you what the uh the full height 765r is like because i've not ridden it they call the ktm 798 90 or whatever the scalpel <laughs> if it's better than this that has got to be some bike i don't know i don't know whether it is or not but this is like a ktm 390 on steroids <laughs> it's very planted the suspension is amazing i've not messed with uh, any of the settings i don't know whether kevin down at brighton moto has done anything to them from stock settings um but yeah it, it's it's amazing and uh, going over potholes it just soaks them up no problem at all um but also feels incredibly planted when you're pushing it around a twisty brilliant I always get the cars along here. Free! Not that we've got much of this bit of road left, but oh yes! <laughs> oh, watch your speed beat. <laughs> Giggle fest! <laughs> I'm tempted to turn around and go back down there again. Uh, that's one of my favourite little stretches of road. <laughs> um, but yes, cars and things, all getting in the way, ruin our funsies. So I'm still trying to work it out. Who's this bike for and who's the RS for? Are they different people? Um, it's tough, it's tough. Especially not having ridden the RS to sort of know how it feels. But I imagine it's going to pretty much feel exactly the same as this, just with my wrists a tiny bit lower and my feet a tiny bit higher. Um, yeah. The only thing I can think of is that they're made for me and people like me. So uh, i tell you about myself then, what makes me, what this bike's for. I'm in my mid 40s, I'm five foot six, I've got an inside leg which is a little bit shorter than the uh, seat height of this, so um, yeah that's a bit of a struggle. And uh, yeah, um, basically I'm sick of super bikes. It's not that I don't enjoy them, I think the speed and pace of them is absolutely intoxicating. But that's the problem. Um, I mean like 1000cc sports bikes, you're doing 100 mile an hour in first gear these days. You're getting rid of back tyres like no end, and um, yeah, you can't use the performance on them, except for on track. I had to get rid of that traffic, it was doing my head in. Um, so yeah, sports bikes, 1000cc sports bikes, you just can't use them. On the road, that is, to their potential. And even on track, let's be honest, none of us are Valentino Rossi. So um, we can't really do them huge justice there either. 600s are where it's at, and they're dead, it's a dead glass. Until now, and now you've got this. The 660 engine with a decent amount of horsepower, 100 horsepower. And yeah, I mean, I guess the reason they've done a sports version of this with the, the, the clip on bars and all that sort of stuff, um, and they've done this version, the upright version, you've got both bases covered. You've got the headbangers you want to get their arse up, wrists down, and uh, go thrashing in a race rep crouch, can get their kicks on the RS. And then you've got the people that want a slightly more upright position get this I think that's really the only difference which is why I find it really odd that they've not made this exactly the same specs as the RS both bikes should be identical except for the riding position that way when you're riding them you get to choose whether you want to have an upright bike or an arse up bike <laughs> not that the RS is particularly arse up um, maybe that's it. Maybe it's just a styling exercise for people who don't want to go headbanging all the time who want to have the ability to. But it's more than that. It's not just a pretend sports bike. It is a sports bike. It will do it all. And um, the only thing it will do is run out of legs a bit quicker than some of the other bikes. Hmm. Puzzling. It's, it's giving the purchaser the choice of what they want their bike to look like. So they should have given this bike everything that that bike has. I really hope the second incarnation of this bike comes with everything that that bike has. Um, if not more, because obviously technology will have moved on by then a little bit maybe. Uh, yes, they should be identical except for looks. 
which is kind of a contradiction. <laughs> I really don't want this video to be a humongously long thing. It's a first ride, it's a first look at, it's a, just a first impression, a snapshot of what would happen if you took a demo on this bike and what you'd feel if you had the same mindset as me. So um, I'm not going to go on, I'm not going to wax lyrical about every single drag horsepower and all the differences and stuff like that. If you want an in-depth review, you need to go and watch a channel that's actually had some more hours in the saddle on one of these. Lamb Chops borrowed one um, a while back and uh, he's done a very good review on this and he has also done one on the RS and also a comparing review as well. So uh, yeah, do go and check out Lamb Chops' videos. Um, I'll probably put a link to his channel down below or um, maybe a link to one of those videos at the end in the end screens. So to summarise on the bike, it's designed for someone like me, or me. Is it for me? I don't know. I am looking for an addition to the garage, but it's looking at the moment, and it's getting my head around it. Now, I am very smitten with this. It handles like an absolute razor blade. Screw that KTM scalpel nonsense. This actually looks like the bike that they promised us with all the uh, pictures and things that I saw of it. Whereas the KTM, it looked very much different. The prototype they lulled us all in with was nothing like the looks of the end result. So um, yeah, KTM, do one. Look at this. They actually built the bike that they showed us. So we've established that this bike is for me, or someone like me. Um, what was your use for it? Well, after going around them twisty bits, I think you could do absolutely anything on this bike, um, from track day hooning to uh, commuting, no problem at all. Obviously, carrying luggage is not going to be quite so easy on a bike like this because they're not really set up for it. But that's a lie, that's a lie. It's got a blooming luggage rack, it comes with a luggage rack. What sports bike comes with a luggage rack? <laughs> I mean, a lot of the accessories aren't available yet, but if you take the pillion seat off this, it's a blooming great big rack. So you could go camping on this, you could go motor camping, go touring on a little 660. Everyone says you need big bikes to go touring on. No, you don't. I went touring on my Beta Alp, which is the 350cc air-cooled thing. It was brilliant. So there's no reason why you couldn't do it on a 660 100 horsepower motorcycle with a very comfortable riding position. Who's this bike for? Well, I think it's for people like me people who are sick of the infinite hunt for power on 1000cc sports bikes on a race that you can't win because now none of the bikes are relevant. You, they, you can't use the power that they've got on the road. So you want something that you can use on the road. And this has got like that sweet spot. It's like the Triumph Speed, uh, it's like the Triumph Street Triple 765 and the predecessor, the 675. It's just got that right about of usable rideability that you can stretch its legs on the road without threatening to lose your license every five seconds. Um, and it's not too intimidating, but also it's got enough grunt to take out onto the track and throw around and have a good giggle on. And that's what this is hitting. It's hitting the people that don't want to just be chasing that brake horsepower number. It's got that beautiful surge of bottom end. It's like a V-twin. Um, but yeah, it's more than that. Um, yeah, this is special. This is a special motorcycle. It's comfortable. It's quick. I mean, like, it's 100 horsepower quick. It's not 200 horsepower quick. <laughs> oh. The twitchy throttle that I found when I first got on the bike is absolutely fine now. Really didn't take me long to get used to that at all. The ergonomics on it fit someone of my height, which is brilliant. Um, I do need to adjust the brake lever if I was going to be going any further on the bike because it's a little bit of a stretch for my short fingers. Um, but yes, it, this is a motorcycle that you can ride every day and it will put that grin on your chops whenever you just soak up that surge of bottom end and mid range. Um, yeah, it's, they've done well with this, they really, really have. Now one of the reasons I like V-twins and now all of a sudden like parallel twins is that torque that you get with them and you don't get it with an inline four um, I mean you might get it with a V4 I suppose <laughs> 
but yes, the, the, the tractability of these engines is just incredible. And here we go, we've got a national coming up, so let's uh, drop it down our gear and let's just see what these revs sound like, see how it pulls. So I've not really done that yet. <laughs> it goes, it really goes. <laughs> Oh, this is such a delight! Um, <laughs> this is, uh, have I said it? I think this is an incredible motorcycle. <laughs> but I like this bike. Um, yes, it's designed for someone like me. A pretty might know this, I don't know. Maybe they, they, they did look into me <laughs> when they designed this bike. Um, I wish they'd made it a little bit lower because it is quite tall for the short asses which when you consider how um, small the seat area is uh, it makes you wonder whether it, they realise that short people have got short legs <laughs> um, maybe, maybe they designed it for women with six foot legs and heels for years Ugh, I don't know, I've no idea um, but I like it um, the engine is incredibly grunty it's perfectly usable as a road bike to give you every single grin that you need without losing your license every time you go out and ride it. I think with the way this handles most people, the average Joe, would absolutely rinse it on track with this. You'd love it. You'd absolutely love it. And uh, the riding position is is really really comfortable. The suspension I think is fantastic. Um, people with more knowledge of these things might go oh it's a bit basic but it's not a focused track bike it's a bike that can do track days a bit like the 765R it's not designed for track days but it can do them that's got um, I think slightly more adjustable suspension than this although not quite sure but my low version didn't and that still was absolutely fine on track yes hmm okay so it's good in town once you get used to the throttle and literally it's taken me an hour of riding it to get used to the throttle on this and it doesn't feel twitch anymore the brakes are fantastic and i think that you'd never have any problems with them your brembo's on the front i don't know what's on the rear um again go watch land shops review if you want all the technical specs of these bikes he's far better at that sort of stuff than me it's town manners at 30 mile an hour oh grand they really are and it's the only issue I have is being able to get my foot down when I have to come to a stop. And I can get tippy toes on one foot. Um, possibly if I got used to sliding off the saddle a little bit, I could get flat foot and that would be absolutely fine. Um, it took me a little while getting used to being able to do that on my V85, but I can flat foot one side on that now. And I've not lowered the bike, I've just got used to riding it. This bike will corner with the best of them, absolutely no worries there. And if you were into super sticky tyres, I'm sure you could fit some super coasters or something, whatever the latest greatest sticky tyre is, and it would be uh, even better for scratching around on. Although there's nothing shabby about these Rosso 2s on here at the moment. I don't like the Rosso 2s just because of how they felt as they wore on my previous bike that had them fitted, uh, but that's just let's not go there tires are a very subjective thing you might absolutely love these tires i had i absolutely love them at the moment <laughs> but yeah uh so it goes around corners it goes quite quickly for a 100 horsepower motorcycle it feels like it's alive um that engine is just gorgeous uh, <laughs> I, i'm actually uh quite emotional about this i didn't realize an engine would make me feel like that it does run out of puff, but it's going to, it's 100 horsepower. But that's kind of the whole point of what I was saying earlier. It's a road bike primarily, and that's all you need on the road. It really is all you need. I'm just trying to think of downsides, negatives about the bike. <laughs> now, I'm not endorsed by Aprilia, I'm not endorsed by Brian Moto, or I'm not... In, no one cares about my opinion uh, apart from maybe a couple of you guys and maybe not even you <laughs> um, so what I say on the bike is purely my own thoughts and that means I don't have to pick hole in something or sing the praises of something if that's not how I feel I really like this bike I can't think of anything at the moment that's a bad point because the only things that are a bad point in it, in my opinion, 
or things that are only relevant to me and people of my uh, height. And that's just the length from seat to the ground. And I'm sure that's something most of us can get used to. I'm weird, my body is all broken and stuff from many years of motorcycling and falling off them. Uh, so uh, this is a bit uncomfortable on my first finger, on my pointy finger, whatever finger that is. <laughs> Index finger is it? I don't know. But on this finger here, this one here, it's a little bit uncomfortable where it grips the, uh, the bar. <laughs> if that's all you can find wrong with a motorcycle, there's nothing blooming wrong with a motorcycle, is there? <laughs> I am flat footing this bike on one foot, and the bike is upright. All I've had to do is slide my arse cheek off the saddle a little bit. So it's perfectly manageable for short asses like me. Let's go! <laughs> oh, what a peach, what a peach. <sighs> I'm hoping that I've been able to rejig the order of all the things that I've said about this bike into some kind of semblance of order uh, that makes sense to you guys who are watching. Um, my opinion is my opinion, it doesn't match anyone else's. That's fine, I fully get that. Uh, so, um, yeah, just take everything I've said here with a pinch of salt until you've had a demo on this bike. And let me know if you've already had a demo, if you agree with some of the things I've said. What I'm going to do, if I can, is go over to Whiteways Car Park up at um, Berry Hill and uh, we'll do a quick walk around of the motorcycle so you can have a little look at what it looks like, which is what you do when you're looking at something. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to go through all the dashboard, all the traction control modes and stuff like that. Um, know that this doesn't come with an IMU for your cornering ABS and all that crap. Uh, the RS does. Uh, so I think it's going to be a bolt-on, so it is something you're going to have. But at the moment, it's, it's not there. I will at some point get a demo on the RS. Because I like this. <laughs> And I want to make sure that if I did buy something, that I bought the thing that suited me the best. I have always had an inkling to get a sports bike. Um, one of the reasons I kind of got a little tired of the 765 was because it was kind of a bit upright, but also a bit not. It was kind of halfway in between. Um, but I'm not getting any younger, and my back isn't getting any more flexible. Let's go! <laughs> Oh, it's lovely! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, let's see how it revs! Oh, that builds up so nicely, and I don't know where the red line is set on this for the running in procedure. Kevin said I was alright to give it some beans, um, but I, I saw red lights on the rev uh, limiter there, so I, I, I'm not going to blow up their demo bike <laughs> by going any further than that. I do think it's got more revs than that. Um, I think it's probably got another thousand, maybe 1500 RPM. Uh, but yes, it's a, it's a rev happy twin, which is kind of what I wasn't expecting. I was expecting it all to be bottom and mid-range. I love the bottom end and mid-range on V-twins. It's one of the reasons I have two Moto Guzzi's in my garage. And it's one of the reasons I like single cylinder dirt bikes. Um, because you just get all that grunt where you want it, where you can use it in the real life, in the real world. And this thing goes around corners, oh it certainly does. <laughs> oh, flip, flop, flip. <laughs> nice. Right, well I don't know how the audio is coming out now. Um, and I don't know where my battery ran out on the route. But as I was going up a certain hill, I was massively, massively singing the praises of this Aprilia 660 Tirono. It's an incredible motorcycle, it really is. I've got to say a humongous thank you to Brighton Moto for lending me this bike. Um, yeah, it, it was really good of them to let me have a proper demo on this. Um, I mean, they know I'm interested in the RS. I didn't really think I was interested in the Tirono, but I might be, you know. <laughs> what a bike. I love the colour scheme on this. I didn't think I was going to be a fan of it because I really don't like matte paint, but it's actually got a nice mixture of gloss and matte, um, which I think is okay. Uh, I'm not a fan of cleaning matte, 
but then most of you know me. Now, I'm not really a fan of cleaning motorcycles anyway, so uh, I don't know how much of an issue that would be. Uh, I do like the look of the RS. They've got an RS in uh, Brighton Moto, um, but they don't have a demonstrator of it just yet. But I am hoping that that will happen soon, um, and I will be touching base with Kevin to get that sorted. These demo rides, they're not for you. These are for me. Um, I only really demo bikes that I'm interested in. Uh, it just happened that my bike needed a service and they had this one there um, is why I've got this today but I am incredibly incredibly smitten with this motorcycle it's it's just fantastic now I haven't got all the way to the edge of the tires on it today but I've taken away a lot of the chicken strips that were on this bike um, and uh, yeah yeah it's something it really is something awesome stuff so once again, a huge thanks to Brighton Moto. If you are interested in any of the Piaggio Group bikes, the uh, Vespers, the Motoguzzi's, the Aprilia's, they've got them down there. So uh, if you're local, go say hello. Kevin's a brilliant bloke, as is his missus, who also works down there. And uh, yeah, they'll look after you. Um, I've been blown away with the customer service I've had from them uh, regarding the sale of my V85. Um, I almost wish I'd bought my V7 from them. Uh, but they didn't sell Motoguzzi's back then, <laughs> they just sold the scooters. They are incredibly knowledgeable people down there, they do know their way around these bikes, so uh, yeah, do check them out, and if you've got a Motoguzzi that needs servicing, or a Prilia that needs servicing, they're, they're good for that too. Anyway, I'll put details of the shop, like I said before, I'm not affiliated with them in any way whatsoever, I just like good customer service, and they've always given that to me, and been honest and transparent with everything that we've spoken about. And I think that's really honourable, especially in the sales and trade of motor vehicles, because you don't often see that. Um, and they are really good guys, from all I can see. So I've sang their praises enough. They're not paying me for this. <laughs> they got a blood out of a stone. Um, but yeah, this point, it's blooming amazing. Absolutely amazing. Really incredible motorcycle. I am so pleased to have had a go on it. Let's just see what I think of the RS660 when I'm able to go and do that. If you like what you see here, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a little thumbs up? And if you didn't, you can always give it a little thumbs down. That's all cool. I don't mind at all. That's entirely up to you. But please, whatever you do, drop in a comment. Let me know what you think of the motorcycle. And uh, yeah, rock on. <laughs> Anyhow, you ride safe. Take care. And I shall catch you all in the next one. Bye for now. Keep that vibe from Ramasai down. Hey, no, you gotta keep that vibe from Ramasai down.